IGTV last spoke to London and Toronto listed Arrow Exploration a month or so ago, and at that point the company was looking forward to the beginning of October as uh, we'd see some exciting developments. Well, is it likely to happen? We're talking now to the Chief Executive, Marshall Abbott, about the developments. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you. When we last spoke, we were talking uh, across the Atlantic, I think it was. Uh, but it's good to have you in the studio here so we can get a bit more detail about what's going on. But I want to get an idea, first of all, at what the portfolio is looking like, just to remind people about what Arrow is offering investors. Certainly. First of all, thanks for being here, Jeremy. Uh, the company's in great shape. We're sitting on cash. We're cash flowing $2 million a month. Mm. We have a very aggressive capital expenditure program moving forward. Uh, that's kicked off in October. So a number of things are happening in October. First of all, we're tying in a very prolific gas well in Canada that will come out at 1,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Uh, fabulous well. We're bringing a service rig into our Colombian assets to do some recompletions on wells we drilled in the first quarter. Uh, that's going to add another 600 barrels a day. So there's 1,600 barrels a day that are coming on really by Halloween. We're producing 15 to 1,600 today. So that gets us above our target of 3,000 barrels a day. So when we did the listing a year ago, October, mm -hmm. we promised investors we'd be 3,000 barrels a day by the end of the first quarter of 2023. We're certainly going to get there and beyond. Yeah. You did say as well when we last spoke that you erred on the conservative as an oil producer, small c. Um, just explain a bit more about that, because I know you don't want to push the wells hard, do you? You want to build up. That's that right. Plan. Explain why that's important, because clearly investors like to see performance when promised, and outperformance is the better way to get out of news headlines. But you're staying conservative. Why? So we are forecasting in our budget 360 barrels a day net per well. Mm -hmm. uh, these wells, I've never drilled wells like this in my career. I've been around 40 years. They can come on at 2,000 barrels a day. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, that's very aggressive. The water will show up very quickly and your operating costs will go up. But at the end of the day, you'll still extract the same amount of oil. So we prefer to be conservative, not only in our forecasting, but in our production behavior. We're stewards of the reservoir. So 360 barrels a day is a good, safe number. That gets us to equilibrium, where the water cut stays flat, oil cut seems the same. And at 360 barrels a day, uh, it's a number we know we can beat. Mm. Um, you mentioned the cash in the balance sheet. I think it's about 8 million, is that right? I think that's what we were talking about last time. But you were talking about bringing 2 million on a month. Yes. So obviously that is at least sustained, if not improved, since we last spoke. So we're 10.7 million in the bank today. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to use that for? Because you're saying you're bringing on all these extra wells. You don't seem to be um, a net spender. You are receiving more money in than you're paying out. Is that right at the moment? That's correct. And how long is that likely to be sustained? What are you going to see yourself next? Uh, your next big budget is going to be spent on? So our capex for 2023 is $25 million. Right. Uh, we expect... Are we talking Canadian dollars here or... US dollars. US dollars. US dollars, US okay, dollars yep. yeah. Uh, so CapEx is $25 million for 2023. So that includes recompletions, drilling, shooting seismic, uh, to give us more running room. So we've got line of sight for quite a distance out on the production side. But from a cash perspective, we're going to cash flow close to $40 million next year, assuming a $70 Brent. Right. So conservative Brent pricing, conservative initial oil production. And from a cash in the bank perspective, we're going to have close to $26 million in the bank the end of 2023. Mm. So we've got the horsepower to fulfill our capital program moving forward. Yeah. In our last interview, you updated some what the, what the, what the costs were for every barrel that came out of the ground. So anybody wants to refer back to that, they can in, in terms of that. You're talking there about Brent way below where it is at the moment, and Brent is already beaten up at $88 a barrel. Um, what are you told about the outlook for Brent? You're not an oil analyst, so I wouldn't come to you to ask about the projections. But what are you working to in terms of what you're hearing from your analysts that are talking about where the company's going? Well, I'm a survivor of a seven-year commodity price collapse. Right. And there just was not a, enough investment in oil yeah. and gas exploration yeah. or development. Yeah. And the fundamentals now point to demand outstripping supply by a big time. Mm. I think what we're seeing in, in the muting of the oil price is 
the uh, United States withdrawing millions of barrels a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. They're going to have to fill that back up here very soon. And IEA is saying that we're going to go from 100 million barrels a day of consumption to 102.5. And that doesn't happen overnight from a supply stand. Mm. So it takes time to get production back up. Mm. So yeah, I believe in the long-term fundamentals of oil price. So I think we'll settle in around 80 to $90 Brent, but we're forecasting 70 just to be conservative and safe. Yeah. Um, what sort of oil are you pumping out of the ground? That's another question we never actually got to cover last time. Are you on the light sweet end or are you on the heavy bitumen type end of the oil market? Does it make a difference? It makes a huge difference. So the oil we produce in Colombia is 32 API sweet crude. Right. And we sell that to another operator, Frontera. They pay us at the wellhead and they use our crude to dilute their heavy. So we have no transportation risk. We pay a buck fifty trucking fee per barrel to Frontera. So that's a big advantage for us. Yeah. What about the Canadian oil? Is that... the, the Canadian is uh, is natural gas with condensate. Oh, right, right. And the condensate is, you can pour in your engine, it's 60 API and mm. it's beautiful stuff. It looks like Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit more about Colombia. Um, when we spoke, there was a new left of center government, which you said you were beginning to engage nicely with, and mm -hmm. they seem to be supportive of everything that's going on in the oil sector. You also mentioned the fact that they are... They, they, they were voted in on a, a ticket for renewables, trying to steer the country around to a more renewables and environmentally friendly sort of uh, environment. Does that impact on your operations at all? What are you doing to have to keep up with a government that wants to see more green energy? Well, that's a good question. So there is a very strong oil and gas lobby in country. Mm. Colombia produces 800,000 barrels a day as a country. Over two-thirds of that is produced by Exxon, Chevron, Carlyle. So there's a very active lobby group. And uh, originally, Petro came out and said he wanted to switch to renewables as quickly as possible. He appointed uh, a very experienced finance minister. And so they become much more pragmatic in their approach. As an example, uh, they wanted to disallow using your royalties to write off against revenue. They've done a 180 degree turnaround and now we're still able to use our royalties as a write-off. That's a big number for us. They're also wanting to tax exports over $70 crude. We don't export. Right. We sell, but I'm sure that'll trickle down to us. But at the end of the day, it's likely going to have about a 10% impact on our bottom line and we can afford that. Mm. So the, the government recognizes that this is their cash register. And this is going to fund their social programs and switch to renewables over the next 20 years. Are you being encouraged as a company to a, a, adopt new uh, green ways of working? I'm thinking about uh, windmills at the, the wellhead, uh, some sort of solar paneling, meanwhile, maybe to try and capture solar power to drive operations. Solar is definitely part of our plan moving forward at every oil battery we've got. Uh, it's interesting in the Yano space, and there is no natural gas entrained in the oil. We flare no gas. The aquifer is so strong that uh, it's dead oil, but it still comes out very fast. So mm. that, that's another GHD net zero for us. Uh, on top of that, we, uh, we're very active socially. Uh, we employ as many of the locals as we possibly can. Mm. But uh, solar is a big part of it. Wind, not so much. It's not very windy where we operate, sadly. Your, uh, your cost mostly in local currency, or do you deal in dollars? I know you trade or the, the company operates and produces earnings in dollars, don't you? Yes. Um, so how I, I'm trying to get around to this idea about how you might engage with the weak pound. I guess you don't really touch it at all. No. So we get paid in US dollars, and we get paid in Panama. So the money immediately exits the country. And... Uh, Typically on a $85 Brent, there's a, a differential in country called the Vasconia differential, and it varies between two and five dollars a barrel, mm. and that's it. Mm. So uh, on any given day with a thousand barrel a day well, we have five dollar operating costs, twelve percent royalty. Yeah. Our net backs are seventy to seventy five dollars. Yeah. 
Incredible. Let me just quickly uh, run through a couple of charts. I just want to start off actually with Brent because I think it's worth looking at the uh, context of, of where the share price is and Brent. We've seen this drop down to Brent. This is a chart we can see here the lows um, equal to the lows we saw at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Brent is, is very weak. I think you were talking there about $77 a barrel you were working to, is that right? Correct. And here we are now at 88. Uh, but we've got plenty of analysts suggesting this should be um, 10, 12 dollars at least um, higher than where it is. So uh, that's the that's the price of Brent. I want to do this in the context of what's happening with the Arrow exploration shares. You talked about the IPO last year. I think it was nine pence a Correct. share, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. London listed stock. This is mm -hmm. currently trading at uh, 15 pence. I notice actually that um, you've just engaged with. Canaccord Genuities Nomad, and their analysts had put in a price target on this chart here of that red dotted line up there, 36 pence a share. I'm not too sure when it's expected you'll get to that level, but I think you're on target, it says, according to that report, for 3,000 barrels of oil a day. You seem to be an awful lot short of that price target. What are you saying to investors about the opportunity for investing and shareholder returns in Arrow? So uh, the analyst report that was put out by, by Canaccord, uh, we had just taken that analyst down to Columbia to witness firsthand execution and efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, but our cash flow per share is going to be 15 to 20 cents, and the average company our size trades at a two to four times cash flow multiple. Well, we are way below that. Right. So the only way that we're going to get the attention we deserve is executing in the field and being conservative. And that's the plan moving forward. So we're going to be sitting on quite a cash balance next year. That gives us significant horsepower to diversify our assets throughout Colombia. There is significant opportunity in Colombia. But one thing we won't do is a dividend. Not yet. Mm -hmm. We'd like to get to 10,000 barrels a day before we consider throwing money back to the shareholders in that regard. Mm -hmm. You said earlier about uh, your neighbors in Colombia. Why are they not interested in the plots you see value in? What is it that you're doing that enables you to have your eye on certain things that other companies are not engaging with? So we're very fortunate to be in the most prolific part of the Llanos Basin. Mm. Uh, we have a 50% partner in Colombia. And he took that concession 10 years ago. Uh, it's got the best royalty rate and a number of existing structures that we're going to be shooting 3D seismic on. Mm -hmm. uh, the other operators in and around us have been very active but they're very large companies, 50 to 60 to 70,000 barrels a day. Mm -hmm. They're looking elsewhere to have material impact. For instance, Frontera is drilling deep water offshore Guiana mm. at $100 million a, a well. Right, yeah. So at some point down the road, the potential exists for us to be dinner, not the diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a question for another day. And I guess we'll be asking that in the next year or two as to whether or not you've got your eye mostly over your shoulder, waiting for a bid to come in from another company. Um, Talking very briefly as well about um, the costs of getting um, a, a well going, are you seeing much inflation in that regard? We're talking about a lot of inflation in other areas of all our lives as consumers and as corporates generally. Are you seeing inflation for Im using machinery and the, the, the drills and so forth? What sort of inflation are you experiencing? So specifically, let's talk day rates on a, on a drilling rig. So typically, we would pay 25000 a day for a right. drilling rig. Right. That's gone up to about 29,000. Right. Uh, consumables have gone up at least 30%. There is a worldwide shortage of oil pipe. So you have to order 90 days in advance and you are exposed during that 90 days to price increases. So overall, we've seen a 30% increase in the, in the cost of pipe. Uh, when you look at it in aggregate over the last seven years, it's not that bad. But uh, uh, activity has gone up considerably. Right. And uh, yeah, we're just dealing with it. At the same time, prices are robust enough. There's enough room for everybody to make some money here. Mm, yeah. Um, let's, um, let's take a look at where you are now. You've got this October um, uh, operations in place, which now seem to be pretty much, we're just question of waiting now for news on that. What else have you got your eye on in terms of some of the other big news headlines to watch out for for the company um, and where Arrow goes? So uh, we've talked about turning on the Canadian gas, recompleting a couple of the wells we've drilled. A drilling rig isn't going to come in. We'll have two wells drilled by Christmas. A drilling rig is going to drill another three wells post-Christmas. Uh, so we'll have constant use flow all the way to the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, at the same time, we're waiting on government approval of a, an expansion of a block that we've applied for quite some time. Uh, that has the potential to add 4,000 barrels a day. So that has passed muster with the three main departments in the government regulator. We're just waiting for a formal signature. At the same time, we're spending $5 million shooting a very large 130 square kilometer seismic program that's going to outline uh, these fault bounded structures that have turned out to be so prolific in Colombia. So again, that's constant news flow going through to the end of the year next year. Oh, we'll look forward to catching up with you again uh, when you get more news. But in the meantime, thanks indeed for joining us. It's a pleasure to see you in London. Thanks for your time. That's Marshall Abbott. He's Chief Executive of Arrow Exploration. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.